an Alaskan pioneer named Kitty Hensley has baffled treasure hunters with this incomprehensible document. Could this be a map leading to a treasure? Just knowing the type of personality she was, it would make sense. Join me, Joanna Skye, as I track down Fairbanks, Alaska's most elusive treasure on the next Lost Legends of the West. In the late 1800s, there was a woman named Kitty Hensley who would make a huge impact on the community in Fairbanks, Alaska. She lived as a pioneer in the Wild West, but at the end of her life, her mind started to fade with old age. Kitty Hensley left a very unique legacy that would keep her on the mind of the Fairbanks community. She left behind a treasure map that would elude deciphering for over 70 years. Historians and treasure hunters alike have been intrigued with the legend of Kitty Hensley, and all of them have been stumped with this. What does this map mean? What we do know is that this map is our first clue to a more critical and fascinating question. Who was Kitty Hensley? That answer could help us decode the map and ultimately lead us to a very well hidden treasure. Join me, Joanna Skye, as I go up to Fairbanks, Alaska to try and get some clues to help us uncover this mystery behind the map and to reveal the mystery behind Kitty Hensley. Every legend has some truth. Every truth has some legend. We find the truth in the legend. Last time on Lost Legends of the West, a woman named Kitty Hensley baffled a generation of treasure hunters by leaving behind an unusual map. I traveled to Fairbanks, Alaska, where Kitty spent the last 30 years of her life. I don't know, it, it, it sounds, you know, it sounds like uh, uh, 
Somebody had a fertile imagination. So, is there any truth to the legend of Kitty Hensley's gold? I asked everyone I could about Kitty and hung flyers all around the town in order to collect information. I spoke with a local woman who owns the only photograph of the mysterious Kitty Hensley. and then finally located Kitty's house and compared it with the map. And a lot of people march in the door of that house and say, okay, now tell me why Kitty was so important. And it, she wasn't. The more I searched, it seemed like the further away I was to the treasure. The gold or relics that were hidden within these walls have already been discovered. The silhouette of who Kitty Hensley was no longer exists inside this house, and neither does her gold. I think the secret to finding Kitty's gold is here in this town. There's a woman here named Linda Atkinson and she is the great grandniece of Kitty. Hi, I'm Joanna Skye, and welcome to Lost Legends of the West, and welcome back to Leland, Michigan. It was in this northern Michigan town that the legend of Kitty Hensley began. She was a very different person here compared to how she is remembered now in Alaska. Kitty would pass away many years later in Fairbanks, Alaska, leaving behind a bag of gold and a mysterious treasure map. This is the town where Kitty Hensley and her family came from, and this is also where her great-grandniece still resides today. In a moment, I'm going to sit down with her, and I can't wait to see what she has to share with us and what Kitty's letters may reveal. Kitty is my great-aunt, and I was always interested in the um, in the family history and stuff, yeah. I really get into genealogy, so we started talking about it one time and then after the park bought the property mm -hmm. from the, the old homestead, then my dad went in and cleaned out the things that he wanted. Right. And he brought this whole box of papers home and I went, wow, he <laughs> gold mine for me. And he gave them to me. Mm -hmm. She had a daughter, Hazel. What can you tell me about Hazel? Fairbanks, Alaska. August 28th, 1916. Dear Brother Charlie, I am so lonesome for her, Hazel. I received your letter and Hazel's large picture. She never wore bangs till the day she left. She is so smart that she can just pick up a hammer, some nails, a board, and a saw, and wields a box. She can make any and everything she sees. She can sew and play the piano some. I think the thing that sticks out most is uh, going to California first mm -hmm. and the way she wrote and told Emma how she mashed all these guys yeah. on the train, the <laughs> conductors and engineers and stuff. There were a lot of them. <laughs> and if we knew what mashed was, we could probably figure it out. But. I mashed all the conductors and brakemen on the train. I made a mash on 10 conductors, 10 brakesmen, 
three news agents, two firemen, and two engineers. In her defense, right. I have to say in one of the letters in, from California, mm -hmm. when she was there, she had gotten ill. Mm -hmm. And she wrote Emma and said that she wasn't, wasn't herself. She huh. just couldn't get to, she That's wasn't what she used to be. Right. So I'm just wondering if, what kind of illness she had. Linda gave me this photograph of Kitty as a young woman. When this photo was taken, Kitty may have been in California during the height of the gold rush. She left her Kilway roots in Michigan for the adventure the Wild West promised. Kilway was Kitty's maiden name. This church on Kilway Road is where Kitty attended Sunday school until her move out west. This is the Kilway Church. Isn't it the cutest little thing? Yep, it's an outhouse. <laughs> July 25th, 1891. I was coming up to Sunday school, but I didn't. Did you and Sarah go to Sunday school on Sunday? What did Mr. Purnell say? Did you tell him I had gone out west to California? The church and the cemetery are all of Kitty's family. April 4th, 1893. My Charlie and a gentleman was watching me when I was sick. I was out of my head. I didn't know nothing. Charlie carried me to my room. Day and night he watched over me. He had doctors to me when I was sick. They kept me five days in my room. And then the people took me to the hospital. I was two months there very sick. Emma, I could not talk or nothing. I could not talk for six weeks. On my flight from Chicago back to Fairbanks, Alaska, for the first time, I felt I was getting closer to understanding the mystery of Kitty's treasure. I learned valuable things from Linda, like the various illnesses that Kitty suffered from. I also learned about Kitty's love life. The most important thing I learned from Linda is that when the city of Fairbanks took Kitty's daughter away, Kitty became a different person. She may have lost faith in everything. It was this incident that most likely led Kitty into her reclusive lifestyle, hoarding her gold rather than using the bank. When I get back to my hotel, I will focus more on the end of Kitty's life after her daughter was taken away. If Kitty did hide treasure, it most likely was during this stage of her life. Kitty Hensley, yeah. Um, on the wall in her home is her death certificate, which was signed by Hosea Ross, who at one time was the, he was the only town mortician and real estate broker. And he is also known for being the person that prepared the bodies of Will Rogers and Wiley Post for their final flight home after their fatal crash here in Alaska. Karen Erickson works at the courthouse. She has the original layout of the Clay Street Cemetery that lists Kitty's gravesite. We came in on this. The Jewish plot is straight over there. So, well, maybe Kitty's down a little further. Okay, let's just start walking down and um, see what we can come up with here. The Jewish plot is... So we're... Without this layout, the location of Kitty's gravesite would be lost forever, especially since there are no tombstones labeling the sites of the pioneers. Well, and you know, it's high, it's entirely possible there's no marker. So George Hiller, Mary Bayless, and Kitty's down a little. 
Why didn't one of you suggest a shovel? Now it's going to be a concrete block with a plastic square about like this and the plastic square will be embedded to the concrete block with some sort of plastic resin. There it is. Well, but see, this one, this is, this is an example, the plastic is gone. It's a black plastic marker. Although there was nothing labeling the marker, it was Kitty's burial site. They moved, my father moved in the house the summer of 1932. It was, ex it was a mess. It was very cluttered. He knew that before my mother would set foot in it, it would have to be cleaned. <laughs> and, and that is where the story of the little nugget arose. Uh, he was sweeping up and um, because he had worked for the FE Company, I mean, the, the Fairbanks uh, Exploration Mining Company, he obviously knew what a little gold nugget looked like. And he spotted one as he was sweeping around the mantle area. Uh, didn't think that much about it. And, and it was, it was, it's not that large. In fact, later he gave that to me, and I have it. Uh, it was set in a ring that I have just knowing the type of personality she was, that reclusive nature, it would make sense that she would do that. And my father did find that small nugget around the mantle area. And I heard later that there had been gold there and that people have found it. Whether that was before he came across that little nugget, I do not know. Yeah, if the house could speak, it would be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm going to where Kitty's house used to stand. Of course, we know now the house is located in Pioneer Park. The map is so complex. I've tried everything. Cryptograms, monographs, counting letters, number codes. Could the letter grouping represent trees on the map? According to old photos of this neighborhood, they stood the test of time. But that's not matching up. Let's try counting blocks and addresses and... No, that's not correlating either. There's a big N on the map. North, maybe? One. Northwest? Three. Let's see. Four. No, well, the only number on the map is 204. Maybe if we... Go Four. 204 Five. paces. Six. Let's start from where Kitty's house used to be and go there. 125, 126, 127, Look. Just ended up at an empty intersection. Hold it. Right in front of me, it's an old warehouse. This is exactly northwest of where Kitty's front steps used to be. Let's go look closer at it. Oh, these are wire insulators on the outside of the building, which means that this was built before the turn of the century, though. Could this building be hiding Kitty's treasure? We may never know. From what I've learned, it sounds like Kitty Hensley may have been a little bit of a charity case, being given $2 to wash dishes and $10 to buy groceries. This is a very different Kitty than the one who owned three properties in Fairbanks and even had records of owning the Florence S, the steamship. So where did the wealth go? One of the reasons it may be so difficult for us to interpret this piece of paper is because it was only meant to be understood by the author. Whatever the case, 
This writing sample is a piece of poetry encouraging others to value their heritage and to get out and learn the ways of their ancestors. As Henry Van Dyke put it, the goal of his journey may be won. He may rest, but he is never idle. A thousand years may pass like a day in glad surprise of paradise when work may be sweeter than play. I'm Joanna Skye, and this has been Lost Legends of the West.